captain of our company is coming to our house tomorrow to see me. Now that usually sounds like a bad deal. <laughs> but, but this guy is a, yeah, I know, well, I know, but they know. This guy's been a friend of ours for a long time, and he's the one that made it possible for me to work at the house, you know. So I said, well, you know, he's going to be in, the, we're making a lot of changes up around Eaton Town in Monmouth County up there, so he's got to be up there, he's going to stop down. So Joan's going to make him enchilada casserole, is it her specialty, you know. <laughs> He'll get back to Trenton a lot faster than he came, I'll tell you that. <laughs> anyhow. Anyhow. <laughs> oh, hey, I'm sorry to I ignored you. Welcome to our little television thing here. And uh, let me know how, have you been watching it in New York? Do you ever watch it in New York? Yeah. I start a new style, sitting at a desk. A much I know with the cat this time. Huh? With the cat. Was the cat on? Oh, I don't even remember that, but it's a new style. <laughs> and how, why, does, why does that happen? People will remember the stupid cat. I mean, I love the they cat, but that's all the people <laughs> remember is the cat. We had, we had somebody send in a donation to the cat. <laughs> and it was specified it had to be used for the cat and her relatives, which would be the two dogs. <laughs> so, you know, you have to be careful because the eye... The IRS can be, you know, snooping around. So what do we have to do? We had to take the two dogs out to McDonald's, <laughs> buy them hamburgers and yogurt. They had hamburgers and yogurt in the parking lot of McDonald's. And it was the cat's money they were eating up. <laughs> so I said, and they brought her home a fish sandwich. So this was it. I said, here, 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 look, look at this. Did you see me in New York? Yeah, I remember the cat, you know. <laughs> the cat was great. <laughs> Did you like the new setting? <laughs> He's not choked up about it, you know. I mean, it's, all right, you know. It's not like it was uh, Ed Sullivan show or anything like that, you know. Geez, that's dating me, isn't it? Tell everybody your new setting. I'm sitting at a desk. It isn't that exciting. Well, this, well sometimes I wear. <sighs> Let's start. Let's start. I am. Let's start. Yeah. Okay, we're, we're, look, look what we've done. We're, we're wrapping up today is the last day of our present dabbling in Exodus. And this is it. We wrap it up. And let's go back for a minute and just see if we can that can we come to grips with the fact that Exodus has nothing to do with Jews, Exodus has nothing to do with Egyptians, nothing to do with deserts, nothing to do with Egypt, nothing to do with coming out of Egypt, nothing to do with coming out of bondage. Exodus has to do with you and me finding our way out of the bondage of our own mind. Exodus has to do with ourselves passing over from a state of the left side of the brain to the right side and becoming free. And it's a long, hard journey. But the first thing that we had to recognize in this exodus out of our own thoughts and our own problems is that there is within us an energy and the myth gave a name to that energy of Moses. And that in each one of us there is this child that will be the one to start leading us in the right direction. And it is a long journey. And then the struggle there we found comes into the desert, which is meditation, around to the backside of the desert, which is the activation of that kundalini energy up the spine, and then the touching at the higher point when we touch the mountaintop, speaking to the burning bush, we're touched by the fire of the fourth stage of consciousness. Then we go into the confrontations with Pharaoh, which are simply the constant confrontations we have with ourselves. The constant arguing with ourselves, the constant fighting with ourselves, the constant struggle with ourselves. The entire world that we live in is encased right here between the two parts of our skull. Right inside is our mind. This is where everything takes place. All of our fears, all of our hopes, all of our desires, all of the conversations that go on constantly. And when Moses is battling with Pharaoh, remember it never happened. Moses battling with Pharaoh is you battling with yourself trying to figure out how are you going to change things because it's always that's all we do we spend our whole life from the time we're born until the time you die trying to change things waiting for something to happen trying to break loose of all of the things that have been disturbing us and causing us problems whether they be family problems or work problems or money problems whatever it may be then there's this constant struggle and then when you walk into these plays which are the different things that 
We are now no longer content to see as we used to be. And finally we get out of Egypt. And last week we reached that Passover. And we, re we realize that we have to take that, which is the blood of the lamb. And we realized also that the lamb is sacrificed because Passover is the movement from the winter to the spring when the sun consumes Aries, the lamb. And so then inside of us, the solar energy has to consume the pineal gland of the brain, which is Aries, and that opens the right hemisphere, and our Passover from the left side to the right side occurs in the same way as the Passover of the sun makes it possible for us to move from winter to spring and then to summer. All of these things are, are logical. All of these things are scientifically provable. There is nothing in the Bible that requires your faith. There is nothing in the Bible that requires spirituality. There is nothing in the Bible that requires religion. All of this stuff is scientifically provable and easy for you to experience once you understand nature you understand yourself you come out of Egypt simply means not that you're free because there is a long struggle it simply means that you're finally headed in the right direction and that's all that it means you're heading in the right direction. You know that there is something within you. There is a child within you. There is an energy within you. There is a fire within you. There is something that will lead you out of the bondage of your own mind. And it is a bondage because we're constantly struggling with ourselves, constantly fighting with ourselves. Even when sometimes we act nice to those around us, still there's this struggle inside of ourselves going on. This fight goes on, this carrying on between uh, you know, the, the different aspects of our own energy. So we come here to page 58 in Exodus chapter 14, and you get to a point where you're leaving Egypt. And remember, leaving Egypt does not mean that you're free of all these problems. Leaving Egypt simply means that you're heading in the right direction. That's all it means. You're heading in the right direction. Page 58, Exodus chapter 14. And it says in verse 2, Speak unto the children of Israel and encamp blah, 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 between the eagle sea and over against blah, blah, before you shall encamp by the sea. The camp of Israel is made at the sea. In other words, here is a point where you have come. Egypt is here. The sea is here. And you're stuck in the middle. You're stuck. And you know what? This is the basic principle. Forget about Egypt. Forget about the Red Sea. Think of yourself. You're stuck. And what is it that is preventing you from getting out of the mess that you feel that you're in? You're locked in there. You can't go back this way because the Egyptians are there. That means you don't know which way to turn. You can't go this way because the sea is churning and blocking your way. You're stuck. And you don't know what to do. And you feel miserable in your life. And you have no possible way within yourself that you can turn and move and become free. Your life is ground to a halt right there. And, and this is where many of us find ourselves. Trapped between the emotional nature and the carnal mind trying to bring you back under control. And this is where you're at. This is where you're at. Look at Exodus chapter 14, verse 4. It says, I will harden Pharaoh's heart, and he shall follow after them. In other words, what's happening to you now is that your thoughts are piling up on you, and they're going to chase you down. They never let you go. They never leave you alone. They never set you free. There's never a time when you can feel peace. There's never a time when you can find peace. There's never a time when you're able to get away from those things which are following after you, which are the thoughts of your mind. So it says in Exodus chapter 14, verse 7, that Pharaoh takes 600 chosen chariots. That number six always portrays that which is works. It's the six previous cycles of the zodiac. It's Remember when Jesus turned the six and filled up the six empty water pots and filled them with water and they became one? Six means those things which you've tried to do, the activities you've tried to do. Pharaoh pursues the children of Israel in Exodus 14. In other words, here's a point in your life where you are so fed up and so disgusted, but there's nobody to talk to, there's nobody to reason with, there's no place to go. You're stuck here, and it just seems like everything is closing in on you. Did you ever get that feeling? Did you ever get the feeling where you feel like just everything is closing in on you and there's no way out of it? 
It's a real life experience. And the Bible is talking about real life experience. The Bible, once you understand it, does not have time to talk about horses chasing Jews across the desert and oceans opening up and all of the silly things that you believed were real and literal are nothing more than mythologies that talk about a great spiritual truth of psychological proportions that inside of you contained within the confines of your mind is an essence that says at times I have had it I've got to get out of here I can't move I am stuck and this stuff just keeps pouring down on me and I'm stagnated I, what am I gonna do and then look what it says in Exodus chapter 14, verses 11. The people said to Moses, look, you've taken us into the wilderness. What would you do this for? In verse 12, look, let us alone. Let us go back to the Egyptians. In other words, you are so fed up and so disgusted. This has nothing to do with Egyptians. It has nothing to do with religion. It has you to do with your life. With, with the things that you're doing. Maybe it's the marriage that you're involved in. Maybe it's the relationship with children that you're involved in. Maybe it's the relationship with your job that you're involved in. Maybe it's the relationship with, with your physical well-being. Whatever it is, it's got you so confined and so closed in. Look what happened just recently. Look what happened just the other day. You had a mother in South Carolina. And she kills two children. That she's pictures of her on television with these children playing on the floor with their toys. And then what happened? What happened that placed her here? And she couldn't go this way and she couldn't go that way. And she didn't know what to do. And she reacted in the most violent and cruel way. And of course, it stirred the consciousness of everybody. And everybody's violently angry at what she did. And everybody is absolutely disgusted at what she did. Because we're human beings who placate ourselves when things are killed and we don't really care or we support the killing. It's okay. It was terrible that this woman killed these two little children. Of course, if a president of our country or of a king or somebody dispatches a hundred planes to bomb a city in the smithereens and kill thousands of little boys and girls. What do we do? We create songs, we raise flags, we march up and down the street, and we say, hallelujah, we won, God was on our side. So we're phonies. This becomes such a terrible thing, because we don't like this type of thing. When we bomb them, or we kill them at a distance, we celebrate it. They're still the same little children, and they still die in the same violent way. But we put our stamp of approval on it. When you're trapped, when you're, let me just tell you something. When you're trapped between there and there, you're capable of anything. You are capable. You've just seen it, folks. You've seen it written on the blackboard of, of life, right in front of your eyes. A magnificent football player, a good-looking hero, how could he be capable of doing that? A little girl, little sweetheart of high school, most favored to succeed or whatever, how could she be capable of that? When you're here, you're capable of anything. Because it's churning in front of you and they're coming behind you. The thoughts are coming from all different directions and your mind becomes fried and you just react. And you can stay in there all night and say, this is terrible. But until they close these damn churches and get people to realize what is God, what is the reality of the human mind, these things will happen and happen and happen. They've always happened before. They'll always happen again. <laughs> these same God's chosen people used to take their little kids and throw them in fire and sacrifice them to God. It was God's chosen people. <laughs> sure. So that's where you're at. You've reached this point, and what did this girl down in South Carolina, she didn't know about this. What did O.J. Simpson, he didn't know about this. And many of you that sit in here don't know about this. And many of you are still struggling and fighting and just about to a point where you're ready to either commit suicide or kill somebody or do something because you can't move out of this damnable spot that you're trapped in between here and here. What are you going to do? The voice in the Bible speaks to you in great allegory in Exodus chapter 14 and verse 3. 
excuse me, in Exodus chapter 14 and verse 13, and Moses says, fear not, stand still. Be still. Stop. Stop. Because you cannot get yourself out of this mess. You're going to hurt somebody. You're going to hurt yourself. Stop. Stand still. Be quiet. Still. Jesus in Matthew 6.25 said it in a different way. He said, take no thought. He didn't say don't worry. He said, enter within yourself and separate from those same thoughts that kill people, that kill children, that rape women, that drop bombs. Those are the thoughts of the world that steal from people, that hold people into bondage, that take people in fear and guilt and separate them from one another. Those are the thoughts of religion. And Jesus said, take no thought. For your sake, for your family's sake, for your children's sake, Understand it and do it yourself and with them because what you saw in South Carolina or what you see all over this world will happen somewhere, somehow, within every single family in one form or another until people finally realize you are caught between the sea and those things that are chasing you down, which are your thoughts, there is no escape and the only thing that you can do to survive is be still. Huh? what's it mean it means stay in your meditation until the dark time of your soul passes over that you may pass over from that which is the left of the dark side to that which is the sun of the right side sit on the floor if you kick your shoes off or whatever you do and enter within and be still and this is the point that I want you to hear and I'll tell you how to do it and you do it through the edit meditation you do it by shutting down the thoughts of the mind and what does it say in Exodus chapter 14 right in front of you and this is the one that you should write on the refrigerator and stick it up there and look at it it says in Exodus 14 14 for the Lord shall fight for you and you shall hold your peace you don't belong in this fight. You're not capable of fighting this fight. And what does that mean? That means you sit and you shut down the thoughts of the mind. And in your meditation, you rise above all of those thoughts into that place where there are no thoughts. And where there are no thoughts, there is no you. And where there is no you, there is simply God. And that is the place where the fighting will be done and the sea will be opened and you will be set free. No other way. The only other way is murder and mayhem, the human condition. Murder and mayhem. What do we do? How do we do it? How do you do it? You've tried. Come on. Many of you got scars all over you. Take a look at the spiritual scars all over your body, all over your head from trying to fight and trying to overcome and trying to win these battles, and you've never won one of them. All you've done is getting beat up and walked away from them and said, well, I tried. Watch now what happens. Exodus chapter 14, verse 16. Here's the, destruction. Here's the instruction. But you lift up your rod. You know what that means? Lift up the rod means raise again the spinal energy. Raise the energy up that spine. Through your meditation, let that female serpent, that kundalini, begin to rise from the base of the spine and wind her way up to the pineal gland, which is Aries the lamb. And there she shall take Aries the lamb, and that lamb shall be sacrificed, and you shall pass over. You shall pass over that churning red sea of your own emotion. Raise up your rod, lift up the energy, allow the energy to raise up through the spine, and the only way you can do that is in deep and profound meditation. And look what it says. Raise up the rod and stretch your hand over the sea. In other words, as that energy begins to raise itself up through the spine, you then place your energy over the emotional nature. You stand above the emotional nature that is raging. You know why it's the Red Sea? Why isn't it any other sea? Why does it have to be the Red Sea? Because the color red means the emotions. 
The color red means the emotions. That's why you see, and you remember on Halloween, little kids come and they have little devil suits on, and it's red because the devil is actually the emotions. And the horns on the devil suit are the power of the emotions. And so the Red Sea is the emotions, and the churning Red Sea is your emotions churning and driving you crazy and confining you and holding you captive to this trial that you're going through, and you can't break through it. And so what does it say? Raise up the rod, allow the energy to pass up through the spine through your meditation, and then place this energy over the emotions which have been crucifying you, and something special is going to happen. <laughs> There's something interesting that occurs here then, okay? It says in Exodus 14, 19, the angel of God the pillar of cloud which went before the camp removed and went behind them and went from before their face and stood behind them because you don't need any direction anymore. I don't have to sit and tell any of you that you should go into meditation. You know that. You don't have to be pulled in any direction anymore. You know the direction to go, but the cloud has got to get behind you. I have to get behind you, and sometimes we have to correct the course a little bit, and when you turn this way to the left, you say, oh, no, no, turn a little bit to the right. Did you ever see <coughs> page 598, the book of Isaiah? Just look at it real quick. Isaiah chapter 30, page 598, Isaiah chapter 30, and voice at voice verse hello verse 21 and your ears shall hear a word behind you saying this is the way walk in it when you turn to the right and when you turn to the left but you know you got to stop and listen nobody's listening who's listening you're listening to your husband tell you how to figure this out he is whacked out to to oblivion or you're listening to your wife tell you what to do. <laughs> you know what it's like? Remember we said, where is the physician? The physician is in here. But we don't go to the physician in here. We are in an insane asylum called humanity. And we are on the fourth floor. We run up to the sixth floor and talk to the patients up there and say, what should I do? And the patient up there, who is 13 times more nuts than you'll ever be, says to you, this is what you should do. <laughs> so you run back down and tell all your friends on the fourth floor, I have the answer. And then mass insanity. Fill and that's what we've done. That's why the world is insane. Because it is one insane person going to another insane person and saying, could you help me, please? Absolutely. Ha! <laughs> Jeez. There's only one physician. The psychiatrist is here in the center, waiting for the door to open. What we've done, basically most of us have spent our time visiting the offices of Dr. Kevorkian. <laughs> what should I do? Hmm, I got an idea. Now, see, this is basically the condition of our life. But you don't have to be led if you listen within yourself in this meditation. The energy places itself there so that you are. And so then Moses lifted this energy. You lift this energy. Look at that. Do you know? Look, just get it. The Red Sea are the emotions that are churning and holding you stopped. And you're looking at that Red Sea, the emotions in front of you. I can't break out of this. I can't get out. I get to get the hell out of here. Sometimes you want to hear, you want to get on a plane and fly anywhere. You want to get on a train and fly. I just got to get out. I got to get away from this. I don't care about kids. I don't care about family. I don't care. I got to go. I got to get out of here. And you can't look behind. You can't look in front of you. And it says, be still. And you come into this point of meditation where you're separated from thought. The energy rises up the spine. You hold that energy above all of those frustrating emotions and then the churning Red Sea splits apart and there's dry land. And what the heck do you know? A way is made out of this mess and you can get to the other side. It doesn't say you've arrived at the promised land, but you got out of that one. 
More than likely, you'll turn around and there'll be another Red Sea over there and another one over there. But now you know how to get across them, don't you? You know how to get across them. Look at Exodus 14, 21. This one, I want you to look at that. I want you to... Do you, know, do you know we did the whole Exodus from the point of Egypt to this point of the Red Sea? We've done it all. We'll come back because there's a lot more. You know, once you get across the Red Sea, then the hell really starts. I mean, this is nothing, you know, they were in bondage in Egypt, right? right? What happened after they got across the Red Sea? 40 years. They went and wandered, and then they wound up in bondage in Babylon. So, I mean, <laughs> it, is, it isn't like this is over. Huh? That's the human condition. But what it is, is that you know a way. Now, watch what happens. Exodus 14, verse 21, okay? Where am I? Do we need the uh, air conditioner running here? Would you do it? Something is getting stale or, or something. Don't you feel it? No. What is it then? You never do. You never do feel it. Here, Exodus chapter 14, and look at verse 21. And Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. Listen with me. Look, 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 look. Don't, don't read it yet. Don't read it. I want to show you something. You remember in Numbers, the tribe of Judah? On the east, the north, the south, the west. And remember, east is always on the right side. Huh? Now, I want you to watch with me, because this is interesting. Watch this. You ready? You with me? Don't worry about me if I'm getting a little flaky, because that's part of this. You got to. Exodus 14, 21. And Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord caused the sea to go back by a strong east wind. See? It is the energy, it is the power, it is the love that came from the right side. From the right side, from the east came this power within you that split those emotions that were trying to destroy you in half and showed you a pathway to the other side. Strong east wind. Oh, document something, will you? Look at something. You just can't turn around and say, oh, oh, that's your opinion. You do know that east is always on the right. When you look north, east is always at the right. I mean, you don't have to be a... That's, that's true, isn't it, Albert? Scientific? Because if not, I am really screwed up with all of this stuff. No, I am right. Well, geographically, too. Now... Look at page 716, okay? Ezekiel, just, just for a minute, okay? Ezekiel chapter 43. And we're, we're, we're getting near the end of this. Ezekiel chapter 43. And look at verse 2. And behold, the glory of the God of Israel came from the way of the from where? East. From the right side. That's why Jesus said, cast your net at the right side. That's why you sit at the right hand of the Father. And that's why the sun, when it is, do you, hey, do you know what this is? November. Do you know what's going to happen next month? Do you know what's going to happen? You don't know what's going to happen next month. Can I tell you what's going to happen next month? Huh? December, December 21st, you know what's going to happen? The sun. December 21st, the son is going to be crucified. Did you know that? Did you know that God's only son, the light of the world, on December the 21st enters a constellation called the cross? And it's the shortest day of the year. December 21st is the day the son is crucified. And do you know what's going to happen the next three days after that? The December, December 22nd, 23rd, and 24th? It's the winter solstice, and the sun is going to be entombed in the bowels of the earth for three days and three nights. And guess what happens on December 25th? God's only sun, the light of the world, by the trajectory of the earth, is born again. You don't have to have any faith. You don't have to read a Bible. You don't have to go to church. Just watch it. You do have a calendar. 
<laughs> you need a calendar. And you know what? 30 years after Jesus' birth, he entered into the water of John, the water man, the Baptist. 30 days after the sun rises out of the solstice on December the 25th, it enters into the water man Aquarius. And then Jesus set out after the water man to select his disciples among the fishermen. And after the sun leaves Aquarius, it enters the sign of the fish, Pisces. And after this crucifixion, he rose up, became the Lamb of God, which is Aries that takes away the cold of the winter. Passover took place. And then in the northern hemisphere, the sun moves to the east to sit at the right side. And summertime comes. You can count on it. The story is acted out in, in your life in front of you. And so the, the, the strong east wind, that which was the power of the right side, came and made a way. The churning emotions were parted. There was dry land. And it says in Exodus 14.22, the waters were a wall unto them on the right and on the left. You know what that is? That's the narrow way. The way is narrow and few there be who find it. And many people who even find the way of meditation according to Jesus can't get across. But you've got to discipline yourself to do this. You've got to want this. This is an adult thing. You've got to want this. You gotta, uh, what is the most wonderful, the most thing that you need or want more than anything else? There is only one way across that sea. And that is to allow that energy to raise itself and to energize above those emotions through meditation and let the sea part and get across the dry land. It says in Exodus 14, 23, the Egyptians pursued, but they lost their wheels because your energy there is strong and the thoughts pursuing you. What is it? What is it that's hurting you? What is it? What is it that's hurting you? What is it something about your kids? Is it something about your family? Is it something about your health? Is it something about your job? Whatever it is that's trying to drag you and break you down. The power that you have in the right hemisphere of your brain, which is God created, will activate and destroy that which is trying to trap you and bring you down and destroy you. And it's a guarantee. It is not easy. And you know what? You don't have to wait to die to find out if it really happened. You can experience it. Right smack while you're alive. Right. Go ahead. Do it. Prove me a liar. Prove the book a liar. Do it. So you've been going to religion all of your life, and religion says all this good stuff happens after you drop dead. So whoever came back and said, you know something? It doesn't like. It didn't happen. Where happened? I didn't get nothing. Where was the guy with the gate? I don't know. Any. I see no gate. Where that? I see nothing with Peter. I don't know what that. I gave you a lot of money. Can I get any back? I'm not mad. <laughs> How about, you know, 50%? I'll take 10, whatever. Because <laughs> the whole thing was a fuck and nothing's up there. And not only nothing's up there, guess what? I came back again. Here I am. <laughs> I used to sit in the fifth row and in the third row, you're saying the same stuff. So, this doesn't work like that. You got a problem. You're trapped. It says, okay, let the energy raise itself up the spine. Hold the energy over the emotions and it'll open up and you'll go to the other side. Prove it. Do it. But do it. Don't talk about it. Don't read about it. Don't listen to me. I need some rod raising myself, you know. I mean, I'm not here to tell you. Come on. You got to do your own deal. Raise your own rod. Lift your own hands. Let the sea break within yourself and get to the other side. You do it. And if you don't do it, here come the Egyptians. Listen to them. Brum, brum, brum. Get out. Come on. <laughs> Closing in on you. Do it. And watch them drown. It's the same thing as Noah. When Noah makes an ark, the waters become truth and lift him up and place him on higher ground. Okay. The children of Israel, it said in Exodus 14, 29, walked on dry land in the midst of the sea. Remember Shadrach and Meshach and Abednego? Yep. They walked in the midst of the fire. Huh? Remember they put three of them in there? And then when the king looked in the oven, he saw the fourth. You have a physical, you have an intellectual, you have an emotional. Those three will burn up. But when the fourth, which is the spiritual, appears, there is no fire on the face of the earth that can destroy you. And you walk in the midst of this raging sea, it was right through the right smack through the emotional nature that is killing you. 
So you've overcome the bondage of the mind. You've overcome the emotions, the rage that would force you back to the old ways. You're not done. There's a lot of fighting left ahead of you, but you got through that one. You're heading in the right direction. And you know, you know, you know that there is a force within you, and you can tap that force when you come up against a rage and Red Sea and you're trapped. And that force within you will open up the gates of whatever it is that's trying to pin you down, and you can get to the other side. Every second, and you prove it in this life because Jesus Christ said, forget about dying and going to heaven. God is not a God of the dead. God is a God of the living. Get your, remember old Reverend Ike, I want my cake and ice cream, but I want it now with whipped cream on the top. Prove it to me. If somebody can tell you about religion and they can't prove it to you, it's a fraud. You know something? Let's say, remember when Jesus walked on the water? And I was like, oh, boy. You know what that is? Do you know what that is? Do you know that water in Greek mysticism, that which that Bible is translated, water is the second stage of consciousness. Do you know what that means? It means that Christ comes to you at the second stage of consciousness, which is water. He never walked on the water. You can't walk on water. Did anybody ever tell you you can't walk on water? Why did you go to church? That guy walked on water. Ooh, that's great. You're stupid if you think people can walk on water. <laughs> how, 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 do I, how do I know that God, how do I know that Jesus didn't walk on water? Because he said, of my own self, I can do nothing. And not only that, but he said, the things that I do, you can do, you can do better. You know what? I tried. <laughs> you cannot walk on water. <laughs> but when you stand on that second level of consciousness, which is called water, earth, water, air, fire, spirit. If you stand on that second level of consciousness, there is where you will see the Christ. In your meditation, the energy will raise you to the second level of consciousness, which is water, and you will see the Christ. And then you get like Peter. And what did Peter do? He got out of the boat. What does that mean? He had an out-of-body experience. And he walked on the water. Huh? He had an out-of-body experience. He got out of the boat. He walked on the water. He saw the Christ, just like you do in your meditation. But what happened then? He looked back down. It was carnal problems. And pfft, down he went, right down the toilet. Boom, just like that, just like we all do. That's what it's all about. This is real, logical stuff, psychological stuff that happens to the electromagnetic fields of your brain. And all of it can be acted out, and it can work for you. And here are the things that frightened you this time have been overcome through this inner mystical power, and you've got to understand that you have it. And it says in Exodus 15, I will sing unto the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. The horse and his rider has he thrown into the sea. Into the Red Sea was thrown the red horse and the rider with the red horse, which are our emotions. So now the sea is parted. You've escaped that one. You're free to walk to the other side and head for the promised land. And there's a lot of stuff to come and a lot of trouble to come, but at least now you know how to overcome whatever steps in front of you. That's the good part, and that's Exodus. Thank you for being with us and sharing.